I told Mr. Aiken, you cannot do this. I have not given you permission to bring my child to testify. And he said nothing except, do you want to live to take care of your children? Then let me do my job. Do you know, he has never tried a case before, nothing. I am his first client. He is all I have, and I must trust in him if I can. When he questioned me, I could tell by the look on his face that he did not believe me. And I said to him, you have already condemned me and you are my lawyer. What do you mean, he said? We have only just started. No, I can tell that the look on your face is the same everyone in the courtroom. You believe I am guilty. And there is nothing I can do. There were guards who were placed in front of me so Anna could not see me as she testified. She knew I was in the room she wished to just look upon me. It would have calmed her. And the guard stood. She could not see me. And she cried out for me. Do you know the anguish of a mother who hears her child cry out and cannot go to them? Mr. Aiken led her down a path of words that would incriminate my son Johnny. He asked her questions of where was Johnny? Did Johnny have anything to do with the assassination? She said no. But then he said, what of the kidnapping plan? Did he not know of that? I know not. What of your mother? Did your mother know? No, my mother knew nothing. Nothing at all. Mama, where is Mama? They had to escort her out. So weak she was. There are many ways of killing. Are there not? There is the physical act of ending a life. But what of the killing of the soul? If that be true, already I have died many times. I remember the day of the assassination, the entire town of Washington, they were all celebrating for only a few days before the surrender of Lee had come. I saw no reason to celebrate. Why would they suppose that I, as an avowed Confederate sympathizer, would not be joyed at the death of Lincoln. Why would they think that I would be excited that the South had lost? Fireworks going off everywhere. People in the streets drinking, yelling. I wish for none of it. I wish 
to go home or draw my drapes. Look at all these proud, licentious people. God will punish them for their ways. Between you and I, Mr. Booth, he was only a hand of the Lord's. He did what he felt he must do. And all of these other people who are accused of aiding him, we all stand at the threshold of death. I can say a little more. There is not much more. Mr. Aiken has told me that if I am found guilty, I will die unless the president, Mr. Johnson, will recommend leniency. Then I would have life in prison. to die, to die is to say goodbye to my children, and I do not wish that. The Lord is with me, always I feel he is with me, <coughs> I am done. Nothing wrong. that you must have questions of me. Is there anything you would like to ask of me? Please, I, I feel that it is good for me to be able to speak. Oh, anyone, a question? Oh, please, do not be shy. What happened to Jeremy? My boy. 
boy Johnny. Uh, well, this is July 5th, ma'am, and as of this date, I do not know where my boy is. A anyone else have a question for me? Yes. What did you know about the conspiracy? Sir, I, I cannot believe, as a fellow Confederate, you would ask that of me. I knew nothing, so I have testified, and I will stand by that. Anyone else, ma'am? What are you charged with? Conspiracy. Conspiracy to murder the president. And Secretary of State Seward. And Johnson as well. All of these things have been laid upon me. And none of them, none of them be true. Can I tell you anything further? How old are you? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 42. I'm an old woman. Anyone else? My fellow compatriots, it will go no further than this cell. By a show of your hands, how many of you say, I did nothing, that I am innocent? Then be brave, and I ask this of you. How many of you stand before me and accuse me and tell me that I am guilty of all charges? Raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Two among the rest of us. We will be watching you too. <laughs> arrested and stand trial with me have been to my boarding house. When is it wrong for a businesswoman to have boarders in her boarding house? <laughs> I see no fault in this. If they condemn me for this, there is nothing I can say or do. They were only boarders. And then I remember my lawyer saying to me, Mary, what of Lewis Powell or Payne or, or Wood, whatever his name be at the moment, what of him when he came to your boarding house the night of the 17th, after the assassination. He came to your door, and the police had already come. They were questioning you and everyone in your lodging. When a knock came, and the door was open, this ragtag man stood before us. And you, Mrs. Surratt denied him. You looked at him when you were asked, do you recognize this man? Do you recall what you did? Yes, I recall it. I raised my hand. As God is before me, I do not know this man. 
I've never seen him before. And I did not ask him to dig a gutter for me. It is all past. I could say nothing more. Anyone else? Now, why is God on the side of the Confederates? Because, ma'am, among many things, it is our God-given right to own slaves. Oh, I know well that there are those who mistreat them, who are cruel, in court, a number of them have come forward to testify that I have never been cruel to them. But it is all right. That war fought long ago, the Revolutionary War, it was fought for the same reason we have fought this war. We wish our freedom, we do not want this government or anyone else to tell us what we can and cannot do. You, sir, you have a question. Yes. Speak then. Do all your boarders get to go to your room? <laughs> <laughs> sir, you are. <laughs> My goodness, sir, I will answer you. If they chose to speak to me in confidence, they too would be allowed in. Does that answer your question, then, sir? In a small way. But then again, isn't that friendship? Wouldn't that be knowing him more than just a border? I have already stated that he was a friend. Yes, you must have more questions, sir. <laughs> what else do you wish to ask? Nothing except for the fact that if these people weren't so close to you, then you maybe did know something. Guilt by association, is it, sir? A little bit, with the friends who you keep. And this child who sits beside you carries the guilt of being of your blood, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't fall far from you. <laughs> I cannot turn my back on you. Sir, you are like the courtroom filled with people who wish me dead. You wish this for me? Yes. There is nothing I can say then, sir. Nothing. Is there anything else you wish to condemn me for? No. 